Hello everyone, welcome to another class with Professor Choi. This is a continuation of our statistics uh, learning. So today we're going to be talking about why do we sample instead of collecting population. So one of the things that I normally explain when we're talking about statistics is the fact that a lot of the times we need to sample instead of collecting the entire population for something and there's several reasons for that. Now, a, the difference between a sample and a population is basically that a population is whatever you define as the entire group. So let's say that I want to collect the distances between every exit on I-95 in Miami, Dade County for example, okay? Then the, um, I would have to basically go in on I-95 and collect the distance between every exit. That is my population if I define it so. A sample will be a group or a piece of that instead. Population is not really everything. It's more like everything as I define it. So if I say my entire class of 8 a.m. in the morning, then it will be absolutely everyone in the 8 a.m. class. A sample is a small portion of that or a portion of that, whatever size you can. Now in a very general way, the larger the sample, the better, compared to the size of population. But a lot of the times, for example, we can't really collect the entire population, and there are multiple reasons for that, okay? So today we're gonna have a little conversation, first of all, about why do we sample, and second, how to sample correctly so that you minimize the error created between the sample and the population. All right, so let's talk a little bit about that. Now. Why do we sample instead of collecting population? Well, one of the reasons is because contacting the entire population can be too time consuming. Uh, political polls are a really a good example of this. Um, elections are basically on election day or whatever election period, depending on where you live, which might be longer than one day. But the point is, election is when basically people show up to vote. So that's the day where everybody who decides to vote, vote is counted, vote is collected, okay? But before that day happens, if people want to figure out what's going on or who's ahead or who's not ahead or things like that, then you might want to contact sample instead of population because people change their mind from the day that, um, that they were there to the day that you vote. Uh, one of the things that I can tell you, by the way, about political polls is that they seem to be really good locally and they also seem to be pretty good nationally, but with some, um, with some caveat. And we'll try to talk a little bit about that, especially because uh, there was a big, quote-unquote, mistake on the 2016 election. All right. Now, uh, another reason why we sample instead of collecting the entire population is it may actually cost too much money. I mean, I need you to understand in order to sample everybody, there has to be somebody on the other side of the phone calling. Um, there may also have to be something mailed to you or something so you answer it, etc., etc. It may be physically impossible. In other words, it might be really difficult to reach absolutely everybody. And even if you can reach everybody, everybody may not be able to answer back to you or they just won't answer back. Um, we're having problems in the year 2020 collecting the census data for pretty much everybody and the census is something that is written in the constitution as something that we need to do in the united states it's one of those few things that we do every decade that is in the constitution and a lot of people are not responding to it all right it may actually be destructive to collect the entire population let me give you an example imagine that i am a tire manufacturer and i want to figure out how long my tires last. If I take my entire production and waste it in order to figure out how long the tires last, that costs too much money and it is destructive. In other words, I can't sell those tires. Instead, it might be more useful to simply grab 20 tires and figure out how long do 20 tires last, find the average of that, find the standard deviation, and then make an assumption about how that um, kind of correlates to population and then go with the assumption. All right, most of the time samples are adequate and I want to say, I want to kind of put, you know, 
couple of quote, quotations here. So um, they're adequate, but you have to make sure that they're correct. And um, as long as we understand that there is an error associated with a sample. And to understand this error, I want you to think about, and we have covered this in previous, um, in previous videos. So imagine that my population has a normal distribution with a mean of mu and a sigma of, um, and a sigma whatever that is. So imagine that this is my population information. Every time I collect the sample of the population, my mean for that sample is not going to be the one for the population. In other words, I am going to collect a sample and my sample mean, let's call it x bar 1, it's not going to be exactly as my population mean and neither is going to be my sample standard deviation. If I collect a second sample, then my second sample may not be exactly the same as that population either. If I collect another sample, or I collect another sample, and I collect another sample, none of them may be exactly the same as population. The difference between those two numbers is your error. Okay? So you need to understand that every time you sample, there's going to be an error. This here is a erase itself. So every time you sample, there's going to be an error, and you need to therefore understand that the error is there. So there's always a difference between your population information and quote-unquote the truth or reality and your sample and you need to basically try to minimize that error all right how do we minimize the error where well, there are two basic ways to minimize your error correctly one way is to collect a larger sample Now, how much larger? Um, we always like to say that the larger the better. But usually, when you start collecting sample sizes of n greater than 30, that starts showing up some normality, and therefore you can kind of make assumptions about that particular sample that may be useful to, your, um, to whatever you're trying to understand. So basically, the larger the sample, the better because it approaches population and minimizes the error and if you go above 30 that usually starts working so make sure your sample size is greater than 30 most of the time all right our again much much greater than 30 and the bigger the better now let's talk about the election in 2016 because this is a quote, very famous quote unquote they got it wrong and in reality, they didn't quite get it wrong. It's just the difference between the overall vote and the electoral college. All right? But anyway, in the year 2016, in the election between President, now President Trump and Secretary Hillary Clinton, one of the things that happened was that the majority of the polls were predicting that Hillary Clinton was going to win. As a matter of fact, lots of people gave her a very high probability somewhere around 75% to 80%. And therefore, President Trump, who eventually became president, was gonna lose. When somebody sees something like that, they say, well, 80% this one's gonna win, 20% that one's gonna lose. If the other thing happens, somebody got something wrong. If you've been understanding probabilities with me, you would understand that this is not the case. When somebody says that the probability of something is 80%. It also means that there is a 20% probability that this is wrong. Welcome to your error. Okay? So what that basically means 
is that if we were to repeat this same process randomly, then 80 times this person would win and 20 times this person would win. It doesn't mean that it is impossible for the other one to win. And as a matter of fact, that's exactly what happened. Okay? Now, to understand how this is, gets even more complicated, remember that every time you're collecting these samples, you're not allocating for the Electoral College in the United States. What you're doing instead is you're just calling people. Secretary Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by more than 3 million people. Popular vote is what these samples are collecting. Because basically what you're doing is you're just calling people. These samples are not collecting Electoral College results. They're collecting popular vote, a.k.a. again, calling lots of people. So technically, they were right. Because again, Secretary Clinton won the popular vote by at least 3 million votes. So these were correct. But of course, we don't elect presidents in the United States through direct representation. Every vote counts as one vote. Instead, we elect them by electoral college, which means that we vote and then our state allocates a particular amount of electoral votes to a particular person. Okay? So anyway, if you're interested in more of that, take a history class or a political science class. They will help you with that. All right, let's talk about ways to randomize your sample. So another thing you need to be doing basically is also randomizing your sample. If you don't randomize your sample, you could end up with a lot of really faulty results. And that is very bad statistics, very bad science. So you really need to work on trying to randomize your sample correctly. All right, now there are four basic ways in which you can randomize a sample. And you would basically have to pick whatever works for you in the moment or situation that you're doing it. Okay? Now, a simple random sample is as simple as it gets. Imagine that I want to collect a sample. Let's say I have a thousand employees in my company and I want to collect a random sample of these employees. One of the things that I could do is I could put all the employees IDs on a hat. So think about having a thousand pieces of small paper and then I put them all in a hat and then I collect from the hat whatever amount of people I want to sample and then I sample only those people that I collected. That's what we call simple random sample. Um, if you're interested in creating random samples, by the way, maybe not by pulling numbers from a hat, but by using a computer, uh, there is a random number generator available to everybody. So right now you could go on Google, for example, and you could put a uh, random number generator, and then it would randomly generate a number for you. If you say, I want a random number between one and a thousand, it would click on random number and it would just randomly generate a number for you. So you could use that. All right. Another way is what we call systematic random sampling. So, a systematic random sample is basically, imagine that I have 100 people on my group and I want to randomly sample 10 of them. All right, one way to do it, like I said, is to put the 100 in a hat and then pick whatever I want. Another way is to systematically random sample. So I put them on this group without any particular order and let's say I collect the second person and then after that I collect every 10. So I will collect the 12th person and the 22nd person on the group and the 32nd person on the group and the 42nd person on the group. This is what we call systematic random sampling. So you put create a random uh, list of 100 and then after that, you collect, say, every 10, starting at whatever number you want to get to the ones that you have to collect. That's what we call systematic random sampling. All right. Another one is what we call stratified random sampling. Imagine that you know the groups that you're collecting do not represent what you want, but you want to make sure that they do represent what you're looking for. Okay. So, let's say that I am here on position one and um, 
Let's talk about like a survey in a college. So let's say I want to make sure that my survey represents the college population. Now let's say that my college population has 30% um, Hispanic students, 20% uh, African American students, and 50% Anglo students. Okay? Let's say that this is a, how my college is allocated. Now imagine that the campus that I'm in doesn't have this allocation. Now let's say that the campus that I'm in has 40% Hispanic, 30% um, African American, and 30% Anglo. Good so far? So let's say that again, this is the college and this is my campus. But imagine that I want my campus to represent the college. Okay? So let's say that I want to collect 100 students at my campus for my sample. Okay. What I need to do is I need to basically look at what I want to collect and collect this in my campus. So if I want to collect this, then I have to make sure that I collect 30 Hispanic students for my sample, 20 African American students for my sample, and 50 Anglo students for my sample. Even though my campus has this distribution, what I'm doing is, I'm fixing my sample to what I want to see, which is basically the college population. Um, it's kind of like taking a survey. Imagine that you want to take a survey of people over 65, but you don't have a really large over 65 population wherever you are. Well, you have to basically collect only from people over 65, basically, is what this means. All right? That's what we call try to find random sample divided into subgroups. Another one is what we call cluster sampling. Um, cluster sampling is, is one of the things that they need to be using in order to figure out elections better. Because not everybody has the same allocation of electoral votes and not everybody is in cities. One of the problems that you have today when it comes to um, election polling is that the majority of polls are being done in major cities and the majority of major cities are full of Democrats and independents. As a consequence of that, every poll that you take has a leaning. If you collect a poll on Fox News, it will have a right leaning. If you collect a poll on CNN, it will have a left leaning. If you collect a poll online, it has a lot of children. Actually, I wish I was joking about that, by the way, but there's a lot of children answering polls online and they don't even vote because they're under 18, okay? So, um, in any case, I need you to understand that every time you have a sample instead of a population, there is no way to eliminate that error. There are really only ways to reduce it. So you need to understand that samples have issues, population is very difficult, and welcome to statistics, okay? So, Reducing the error is what you need to try to do. The two basic ways to reduce the error again right now that I just explained is one, collect as much sample as possible. And two, randomize your sample the best way possible. Okay? And these are ways to randomize it. And a sample larger than 30 is the best way to go. Or way more than 30 will be nicer. Anyway. Have a good one, and thank you for coming to another lesson with Professor Choi.